Hey there YouTube. Today on Real Guys Fishing, we're going to be using my new and improved line winding station to put some copper and some weighted steel on some of my big salmon reels. Because I'm not sure which one of these I want to actually use. If I'm any good at video editing, right about now I should be panning over to me using some lead core in my boat to catch some salmon. I've been having some pretty good luck with lead core getting down, but I had to put so much out to get to the depth that I want to later on in the, uh, in the season that I want to give some weighted metal lines some some chances and i don't know if i want to use copper because i've read that maybe copper is tough to put out and bring back in or the weighted steel which they say goes out a lot like lead core we'll figure it out that in a lot of bad humor all here on real guys fishing all right so what's the difference copper versus weighted steel well i don't know that's gonna be part two of this video in this video, I am going to focus a little bit on the differences in the connections that you have to make to your backer between copper and the weighted steel. All right, so here's a salmon reel. This one's set up for lead core. This is five colors of lead core. So this is what I use to get my spoon or flash or fly combo down to the depth that I'm fishing. So again, on here, I start out with backer. In my case, I'm going to be using some braid. This is 30 pound, but I'm going to jump up to, I think, 50 pound braid on this. I go from braid to whatever I'm using for my weight, whether it's the weighted steel or the copper, it would go in there. Then after that, I've got my leader, which would then go out to my spoon or flash or fly. Now, because I'm using braid, some people stick right here between the braid and the weighted stuff, some, some monofilament, so your planer board can actually clip onto this and not slip. I'm gonna put this on my copper one, but I'm not gonna put it on my steel. We'll see how it works. All right, so we've got the copper and we've got the weighted steel side by side here. They're both going to need to use a barrel swivel to connect to the backer line. And don't forget, the backer line is what you're going to use to fight your fish. So whether you're using 30 pound or 50 pound, whatever backer that you put on your reel, this is what you're going to be giving to your fish and taking back from your fish as you're fighting it. And they also both use a, a little bit of heat shrink tubing, but the weighted steel as you pull a little bit off here, if you go to, to bend this, it doesn't want to stay bent. It springs right back straight. So to make this connection, we're going to use these uh, crimps to connect it to the swivel. But the copper, however, when you, when you go to bend this copper, it'll stay bent. So you can actually tie actual knots uh, between this copper and that barrel swivel. So that's the difference as it goes on your reel. Let me show you both. One of the first things you have to figure out when you want to spool up one of your reels with wire is how much backer you can fit on it, how much wire, and then how much uh, leader you can fit, actually fit on your reel. There's a lot of reel fill calculators that are available on the internet. I use one from Great Lakes Fishing. I'll put a description in there. Uh, but once you figure out how much you can put on there, then you have to count it onto your reel. And you have line counting reels. I actually have a line counter that I added to my new and improved uh, spooling station. One of the primary excuses for making this video was to talk about my new and improved line winding station. So let me grab it. Here it is. All right, so what I've done is I've taken what is generally just a standard Berkeley line winding system and I've done some modifications to it. I've added another spot for, a, for an additional reel of, of uh, line that you can have on there and I nailed it or screwed it down to a board and I added a line counter right in the middle. So the line can come off of here and go through my line counter on its way to where my reel would be sitting right here. So even if I don't have a line counting reel, I can count on the amount of line I'm putting onto my uh, reels. And again, here's just another view. Line can come off of that spool through a little eyelet, come right through here, through my line counter, and then whatever reel I have sitting on my reel seat right here, I can count the line on there. Here's where they get you. That line counter reads in meters. This line counter reads in feet. And your reel capacity is given to you in yards. Oh, it's like a math nightmare. All right, we wanted to do 300 feet. So I gotta get that over to meters. And the easy way is Google, but I'm not gonna do it that way. So 300 feet times 0.97 that should give me meters times 1.21 gigawatts never mind hey siri how much is 300 feet in meters 91.44 meters <laughs> suck it canada 
So, typical, I'm going to do a video, and I don't have all the stuff I need to make the video, so I'm running to where my boat is stored. Yeah, as you can tell, there's no, no leaves in the trees out here right now. I'm in the northern Midwest. There's no open water for a boat, so it's in storage. Anyway, i got to go get some line out of my boat so I can spool it onto these reels. But I thought I'd take a moment to talk about why I actually want to put copper or weighted steel on these reels. So the Great Lakes have gotten clearer and clearer over the years. So as we get further into the summer, I need to get the lines further from the boat because the salmon are kind of boat shy. Um, to get things further from the boat and down to the depth that the salmon are sitting in at the right, the right temperature water, I need to do some, some special stuff. You can use dipsy divers to get it down. I use lead core to get it down off of those uh, planer boards off the side of my boat. But I have to let so much lead core out to be able to get to like, you know, 44 feet down that copper or weighted steel is supposed to be able to do it a lot less. Uh, from what I read at the speed that I troll, like 1.8 miles per hour, uh, 200 foot copper should give me down 44 feet. So if I can put anything I want on the end of that copper, and by that I mean I can put a spoon or a flash or fly combo and get it down 44 feet with just 200 feet of line out past my planer board, I'm doing pretty good. I'm going to give it a shot. Hey, since I've got you in the car, I'm going to give you a special Illinois fisherman tip. When you go to Wisconsin to fish, you may not know this, but Illinois fishermen are talked about a lot in the bars in Wisconsin and in, in the tackle stores in Wisconsin. So my helpful tip is when you walk into a tackle store, say in northern Wisconsin, the first thing you should say is, hi, I'm from Illinois. They'll show you all sorts of special lures that nobody else seems to be fishing with, but they keep in stock just for guys from Illinois to fish with. All right, so as a test, I bought 300 yards of this line and I wanted to see how well this little counter I did and converting that it should be 274 something meters is 300 yards and I'm about dead on 274 and a half so my line counter works well that's kind of cool all right so I got the surgeon's knot tied and I actually put a small piece of tape over this Use any kind of tape you want. This just happens to be duct tape. And what this does is allows that braid to dig into something. So I'm gonna get this started here. And I'm gonna reset my counter. I'm gonna reset that one too. Now I'm gonna put 300 yards of this on, but I'm not gonna bore you. I'm just gonna start winding it on. And you can see my counters are both starting to move. That's a meter, that's two meters. When I get 300 of this thing done, I'll turn this thing back on. Still going, still going, still going. All right, I've got my backer on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a sh short section, maybe about, uh, I don't know, about 10, 15 feet tops of some big game mono, this stuff, that my board can actually grab to. Then I'm going to add the wire. I know you're going to ask, it's going to be a double uni. So, let me just get started here. Watching my fat ginger fingers tie knots is not the most entertaining thing, so I'll come back when it's done. Okay, I've got the mono tied in after my backer, or my actual uh, line. Now I'm going to put some of these on. And I'm going to go from here to this copper that's up top here. Now I gotta tie my little barrel swivel onto this line, just use a regular old fisherman's knot. Probably seen it a million times. So knock yourself out, do your own. One, two, three, four, five. Through the hole. Oh boy, come on. Through the hole. And you cinch it up. And there it is, the old fisherman's knot. Cut it off. So again, this is this is the uh, swivel it's got to go through there. It's, it's got to go through that line guide 
when it comes in. This will have no trouble doing any of that. So then shrink tubing goes on there. And then I try to do what's called a haywire twist. This isn't about knot tying, but I'll get that on there. It's bent over real tight. And then you just gotta work it into this haywire. This twist. All right, so there's there's the haywire twist. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the shrink tubing up and over that, and then shrink it down. And we'll get something to heat it up with. That all squared away. So those guys have a lighter. All I could find was a match. Twist it. Put your fingers, a little twist of this. Now I'm winding the copper on, just, just like it is regular fishing line. Hey Siri, how much is 300 feet in meters? 300 feet is 91.44 meters. All right, now I'm just gonna wind this thing on. And remember I'm doing 91.44 meters uh, and I've already got six on, so we'll get 91.44. That'll be 300 feet of copper. Same thing, all the copper's on there now. Uh, I've got the shrink tubing, another haywire twist to the swivel. All right, so my backer is on. Now, to make my connections here, and this is why, by the way, this is why I have this new station. I've got my weighted steel up top, then that's my leader material, and my reel stuck in place right here. All right, so it's going to go backer to a swivel. Then it's going to go swivel to my weighted steel. But to get my weighted steel to go on here, remember, no knot. It's going to be some shrink tubing and a crimp. Let me get that going here for you. Make sure your shrink tubing will go over the crimp that you're about to put on. Mine's really tight, but it does go over it. Okay, and remember, your entire connection, whether it's this steel connection or the copper connection, has to go through the end uh, of your rod. So make sure your, your, your last guide is big enough to accommodate this. This is an Akuma rod. No problem. It'll go through there. And also it has to go through your line guide that goes into your reel. And I've already tested it. Yes, it goes through that spot as well. So now I'm good to go to make my connection. All right, so here we are. I've got backer to barrel swivel. This is my weighted steel with my crimp on there. And this is my piece of shrink tubing. So I'm gonna put a couple crimps on this piece right here with my with my crimping tool, which is right here. And I'll bring the uh, shrink tubing up and shrink it down. Okay. Backer to barrel swivel. Underneath the shrink tubing is my crimp connector. I'm going to shrink this down with this time I'm not going to match. I'm going to use my heat gun. So let me just hold on out here and shrink it down. All right, I'm getting ready to put the weighted steel on here. I'm going to put 200 feet. I'll convert that to meters using Siri because, oh my God. Uh, but my first observation so far with this weighted steel is. It kind of wants to jump off the spool, so I had to put a piece of tape over it to keep it from springing off the spool as I'm putting it on. I hope it doesn't have that much memory when it's on my reel and wants to spring off all the time, but again, when I get to the boat for part two of this, we'll get that figured out. Just so we're clear, I, I bought the, the 400 foot, this one right here, 400 feet of this uh, weighted steel, and it actually is fatter than the plastic they give you on. So it is just just jumping off of the spool. And I'm having some trouble putting it on. This is not as easy to work with so far as the copper. 
All right, now that I've got it down below the, the edge of the lips of the spool that it came on, it's doing a lot better. But boy, when it was totally full, it was springing off of there like crazy. All right, here they are, side by side. The one on the left is weighted steel. The one on the right is the copper. And the steel is still staying on the reel, but man, it wanted to spring off when I was putting it on. The copper stayed flat the whole time. We'll see how well they work when we get out to the boat this summer. Well, there you have it. You wasted another 15, 20 minutes watching Real Guys Fishing. Thank you for that. Please subscribe. Now, be sure to watch this summer for part two of this series when I take this weighted steel and copper out into the boat and hopefully don't lose a fish because I will swear a lot. Be sure to tune in. Thanks a lot. Oh, is it huge. Here, weigh him. We got to see how what he weighs. I don't know if it'll fit in the live well. Oh, it's 20 pounds. 20 pounds? 20 plus? Yeah, 20. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, all 20 pounds. 20 pound lake trout.